What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is Geography King. It's been a while since we've done Geography King, isn't it? Yes. So his link is in the description, but wait till after this video to go and check him out. We'd still so appreciate it. Oddities of US Geography, part three. We've checked out the other two parts. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be checking out part three. This is awesome random niche facts, aren't they? Yeah. So we're going to get into it. It's normally quite fast paced. So be ready. Smash the like button, smash that subscribe button, we'd really appreciate it. We just mentioned it because why not mention it? Band of Brothers episode one is on Patreon, isn't it? So if you want to check that out, go and check it out. The full uncut reaction, you've got to have your own copy. But the edited version will be on the channel in hopefully the next few days. Yeah. So if you, if you can't do Patreon, which we completely understand, watching that would be enough. And the link to the movie reactions is in the comments. Are you ready for Oddities of the I'm US? Ready. Let's go. Howdy. Let's go. <laughs> Howdy, it's Kyle with another installment of Oddities of US Geography. This is the third video in this series, and I'll leave links to the other two in the description if you want to check those out. But this We've being the them. third video check in the series, out. not all of these are truly oddities. That's why I've added the word quirks in the title. But either way, to take a look at some interesting quirks and features. He, he didn't yeah, geography. he decided not to do the quirks. The first one that I'm going to mention is about Alaska's location relative to the rest of the US. As most Americans know, Alaska is the northernmost state in the U.S., with the northern third of the state being north of the Arctic Circle. Yeah. But Alaska is also the westernmost state in the U.S. The Aleutian Island chain, which extends southwest from mainland Alaska, extends farther west than the westernmost islands of Hawaii. And the Aleutian Island chain is so long it extends even farther west than that to the point where it crosses round. the International Gate Line. <laughs> Tattoo Island is the westernmost portion of Alaska, but it's so far west wow. that it's actually so that, east. Wait, and so even, that's part of Alaska, technically. Mm. I feel like that's cheating a little bit, but it's part mm. of it, isn't it? Even though Attu Island is west of the international date line, it operates as if it were east of the date line. Oh, that wow. way, it's never too confusing. Attu is always on the same day as the rest of Alaska. But technically speaking, that makes Alaska the northernmost, westernmost, and easternmost state in the U.S. <laughs> from the cold of Alaska to the tropics of Hawaii, That's mad, isn't it? let's take a look at some of their highways. If you look on a road map of Hawaii, you will notice that there are interstate highways there. At first, that might seem very strange, being that interstate means it would have to connect multiple states, and of course, you cannot drive from Hawaii to another state. However, Hawaii receives the same type of federal funding for roads as all the other states, so for interstate highways, it has to have a special condition. Okay. And they're simply numbered 1, 2, 3, but they all have the letter H in front of it. And there's some good info out there about the engineering and construction of H3. And that goes through a beautiful stretch of rainforest. That's what we looked at, were not it? Oh, it and looks beautiful. And it might beautiful. very well be the most beautiful interstate drive in the country. And used to support it. <laughs> but it looks beautiful. Highways. Staying in Hawaii, let's talk about its smallest county, Kalawao County. The area was originally set aside as a quarantine for people with leprosy. And this goes oh, back wow. before the days of Hawaii was a state. Mm -hmm. But when Hawaii became a state, this area became its own county. There's okay. always been a very small population there. At the 2020 census, there was a total of 82 people. Only 82 At the 2010 people. census, it was the least populous county in the country. However, it's only the second least populous now. And that's Who's because the it? least populous <laughs> county in the country is Loving County, Texas. This is in the southwestern portion of the state right along the New Mexico border. At the 2020 census, there was a population of 64 people oh. down from 82 in 2010. Not many people love mm. that county. Oh, come on, that, it was asking for it, weren't it? <laughs> it was asking for it. Like most it's of the so rest bad. of rural Texas, the county is losing population. However, going from 82 to 64 in 10 years, there really isn't that much more room for it to go. There yeah, are countless saying, number of ghost towns just be abandoned in the US, but I've never heard of a county losing all of its population. I've driven through the county, and the largest town, I guess you could say, is called Mentone. It's really small. It's basically just a collection of houses and a few trailers. And yet, it's its own county. That's mad, isn't it? Next, I want to talk about where Canada borders France. Mm, There's what? a small portion of France that borders Canada just to the southwest oh, of the islands, province of is, Newfoundland. And these are a couple of small islands that are French territories called St. Pierre and Miquelon. Mm. And these two little islands are the last piece of the old New France colony of North America. Oh, okay. If you think about Quebec and Canada and Louisiana and all this territory in North America that France had, well, all they have left is these two little islands. <laughs> So if you're an American looking to get to France at the shortest distance possible, this is it. You Next can't really claim you've been to France, yeah. can you? <laughs> this is the most densely populated rural part of the country. That might sound like an oxymoron, but there are approximately 100,000 people that live on Sand Mountain, and it's entirely rural. 
Oh, wow. It isn't really a mountain. It's actually a ridge, but it does look kind of like a mountain. So we're claiming it. Look at this mm -hmm. map. The area just east of the Tennessee River and west of Interstate 59 is mm -hmm. approximately what you call Sand Mountain. And on top of the mountain, or the ridge, is basically one long chain of towns connected almost like a bunch of train cars. Okay. So there'll be a really small town of maybe a thousand or so people, maybe a mile of it's open space, people. and another it's small not, town it? of 2,000 people. There may be a couple of miles of space. There may be a town of 500 people. Maybe a couple of miles of space, maybe a town of 3,000 people. And it goes on like this for quite a while. Well, I want to know. Let us know in the, the comments, biggest... by the way. These towns, which have like 2,000, 1,000 people, do they have schools? They must do. Or do they have to get a bus, maybe an hour drive to a school, oh, maybe. to the next town, something maybe like that? Maybe they do. That would be really interesting to me. Let me know in the comments. The town in this region is called Rainsville, and there's only about 5,000 people in the entire it's got town. Be a school in only 5,000 people. This minute. area is very Seems interesting. like way it's more. About 50 miles or so. And again, it's all just really <laughs> small towns. School. But they all add up to about 100,000 people, which makes it the most densely populated part of rural America. So let's stay in the same part of the country for this next quirk. So the area around Sand Mountain is about a half an hour or so southwest of Chattanooga, where I live. Oh, okay. There are many he city and so. county and state borders in the U.S. that are not quite yeah. right because they were done with old type of technology and the survey wasn't quite correct. However, the vast majority of these involve very small areas and very few people live in the areas that would be disputed. However, arguably that the most cool. consequential so nice. of all these surveying errors is the Very one right nice. around Chattanooga. Essentially, the error is that Georgia is, is supposed to extend about that? a mile farther Where north. About? Than actually, the error is yeah, it's yeah. like a mountain, isn't it? That is beautiful. Volcano first. <laughs> you wouldn't have been going, would you? Yeah, they <laughs> then, look so pretty. Then bridges are beautiful, aren't they? Mm. Very beautiful. That Georgia is supposed to extend about a mile farther north than it currently does. And this would have huge consequences for two reasons. One, it would put portions of the Tennessee River in Georgia and thus allow Georgia to have access to water in the river. Okay. There was a huge drought around 2007, 2008, and Georgia was running low on water. So they dusted oh, wow. off some old books and ledgers and realized that Georgia is supposed to extend north and is supposed to have access to the Tennessee River. And the state of Georgia almost sued the state of Tennessee to gain access to the river. I never but knew. it wouldn't just be consequential in terms of water. If all of the previous surveying errors were fixed based on using current technology, this one being fake would cause the most number of people to have to move states. Perhaps as many as 100,000 people would be moved from Tennessee to Georgia if this line were fixed. Wow, that's mental, isn't it? Just crazy. Water Staying the same but moving states. Yeah. Population. Fixing this survey would be a huge deal. You'd have to go for all the paperwork and everything. Exclave of Delaware. If you look at this map, there's a small part that looks like it might be part of New Jersey, but it's actually part of Delaware. This area is known as Finn's Point, and it's most known for having a national cemetery there. Mm. However, in the 20th What's century, the Army Corps What's of difference? Engineers... Oh, I, I, I don't actually know. Let us know in the comments. Is it one that... That sounds, like, important. <laughs> yeah, like maybe a military one or something yeah. like that, or uh, foreign soldiers stuff like that. Mm. Other than that, I'm not sure. Um, let us know in the comments. Been to... You said it's famous for being... Yeah, let us know in the comments. I, I think... This is a normal cemetery, but it's not going to be famous for that, is it? Yeah, exactly. It's normally just personal to the people. Yeah. Go there, isn't it? So let us know. I'd appreciate that. The dredging out a part of the channel to I'm make it easier now. for ships to navigate the Delaware River. As a result, some of this dredged land resurfaced on the east Too bank of the Delaware hands. River. However, based on the charter and how the original state boundaries were drawn, this would have to be part of Delaware. And so that's why you had this little exclave of Delaware across the Delaware a River random piece of land to New Jersey. Next, I want to talk hmm. about Interstate 19 in Arizona. This is a regular interstate that connects the city of Tucson to the Mexican border and the cross-border town of Nogales. Okay. But why I-19 is so interesting is that the mile markers are actually kilometer markers. It's the only interstate in the U.S. that exclusively uses the metric system. There are quite a few interstates in the country that have both miles and kilometers marked mm -hmm. on them, but I-19 is metric only. Why? The interstate was built at a time when the U.S. was considering shifting to the metric system. Wow. Just think if people wouldn't have been so reluctant back then to switch that by now it would have been completely normal for us to be using metric, which is the way it should be. But as it is, Interstate 19 is the closest thing we got. It's weird because we're Next, metric. Talk... We are metric. Are we? But are. when it comes to that, we're miles and stuff like that. When it comes to driving stuff like we go miles. We don't miles. have KM, do we? No, well, we, yeah, we don't really go kilometers. I know a few people do, but in terms of signs and stuff like that, it's done in miles. So like every... how signed, yeah, our road signs would say one mile or... Yeah, exactly. So everything else is pretty much a metric, apart from our road signs in the UK, which is like miles, which yeah. I guess is a bit confusing. That is, but I kind of, that makes it easy for me. Yeah, because we've grown up with it. But if you go to Europe, then it is in metric with the kilometres and yeah. stuff like that. It makes it confusing for But us. not the UK. Like, speed, miles per hour. 
He said a clone uh, of his power. Yeah, by the way, I think I've answered my own question. What? Because remember, i just seen that on the screen. Arlington National Cemetery. It must be. National Cemetery must be. Do you say right? national? Why do you say national? Oh, it does say mm. national there. So yeah. Like the, uh, so it is like a military be... one and stuff like that. Must be. Talk about the D.C. suburbs of Arlington and Alexandria, Virginia. You look at this map here and you can see Arlington and Alexandria just across the Potomac River from Washington. Virginia has a really mm. strange way of doing cities and counties and it really comes to light when you look at these two places. It's Washington, D.C. Virginia, places like In... Virginia Beach or Norfolk or Newport News or Virginia. Richmond are cities, but they're not part of a county. So based on the way that Virginia does things, it makes sense that Alexandria is a city, but not part of a county. However, okay. Arlington is a county, but not a city. So even though from a geography <laughs> standpoint, Arlington mind. is a city, from a jurisdictional standpoint, it's not. It's a county. So that's just one that's way to make own rules of the time with the census. It makes it a little changes. more difficult to manage population stats. Next, I want to talk about the location of Chinatown and Little Italy in Manhattan. Okay. The southern end of Never Manhattan is district. downtown, no. and just north of the financial district is where you have Chinatown and Little Italy. These two neighborhoods are directly adjacent to each other, and one basically fades into the other. <laughs> On the opposite end of the country, San Francisco is another city that has a large Chinese and Italian immigrant history. And just like in Manhattan, once you go north of the financial district in San Francisco, you get to Chinatown. And directly adjacent to Chinatown is Little Italy. Oh, it's wow. probably just a coincidence, but it is very interesting that Little Italy and Chinatown are directly adjacent to each other in both New York and San Francisco. Yeah, it's a bit random, isn't it? Mm. So if you're whole walking place. around this yeah. part of town in either one of these cities, you have a lot of great options for food. If you know of any went. other cities where Little Italy is directly adjacent to Chinatown, basically by crossing a street going from one to the other, let me know. All right, from a segue of talking about San Francisco and New York, we'll talk about the moon. If you're huh? curious how big what? the moon is, the diameter is about 2,159 miles or 3,476 kilometers. Okay. Which makes the diameter of the moon approximately the same as the width of the contiguous U.S. Wow. So in other words, if you drive from San Francisco to New York and then back, it's the same as driving around the entire moon. Yeah, that's pretty mad. So wow. now a little quirk about the names of the Great Lakes. There are five Great Lakes, and the state of Michigan and the province of Ontario are the ones that border the most. But an interesting quirk is that Lake Michigan is the only one that doesn't border Ontario, and Lake Ontario is the only one that doesn't border Michigan. <laughs> and the last of the quirks that makes sense why they named it that, then, doesn't it? Rural America. You'll that often hear sense. about small town rural America and how it's different than big city urban America. And there are many features of small town rural America that you'll find all throughout the country, regardless of geography. Yeah, probably However, different. However, I'd like to point out that Key West, Florida what? is in fact. Is that all small. like, is that pain? No, no but that's madness. That is madness, isn't it? Town rural America. So the next time somebody wants to pigeonhole small towns, remind them of Key West, otherwise known as the Conk Republic. So there it is, the third installment of Oddities of oh, US. Oh, it's good, it's actually interesting. Very like interesting, because they're a little bit funny at times, a little bit mm -hmm. interesting at times as well. I mean, some of them just like, what? <laughs> Make no sense at all. And you get a good mix, yeah. don't you? Shout out to uh, Geography King. Like we said, his link's in the description mm -hmm. if you want to go and check it out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button, smash that subscribe button as well. Go check out part one and part two. I think it's Auditors of the US and then more Auditors of, yeah. of the US. We're just going to call this Auditors of the US. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the same title as this, I'm sure. Smash the like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. We'd seriously appreciate it. If you want to check out Band of Brothers full reaction, if you've got your own copy, check out Patreon. Honestly, it means so much to us. Um, but just watching this video, just watching the movie channel, just watching any video means mm -hmm. a lot to us as well. Smash the like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. Watch the video. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends in the next one. Peace.